This podcast contains explicit language. And spoilers. Only if you suck. This is Dave. Carlos is here. And this is Two Fat Guys Talk Games. Episode, episode 24. 24. Yes, 24. Wow. And here, I never thought we'd get past two. Oh, you always knew we would get past two. When do we ever start something and then just go, eh? Too many things to talk about in an hour-long podcast. Yeah, this is true. This is true. <laughs> anyway, on to the actual, you know, game talk. Yeah, let's talk or about actually, games. actually, no, let's bypass that for a minute. We saw Wreck-It Ralph today. Wreck-It Ralph is a great movie. Highly suggested. It is going to be fun for pe- people of all ages. More fun if you're a gamer, but the message and the real messages about purpose and heroism will not be lost on anyone. I, I do believe that you would get a little bit more out of it if you were born and raised in the 80s and 90s, maybe even even the late 70s because of the whole arcade mythos, the, the, the idea behind Wreck-It Ralph. But we are not going to go into spoilers no matter what our opener says. <laughs> Definitely don't want to ruin this for anybody. Just go see it. If you have a different opinion from us saying it was really good and we really enjoyed it, I wouldn't mind talking about different opinions on on the film. But definitely go see it. It is worth the money. It is proof that Disney can is starting to take animation a little bit more seriously, I think. I think they've always taken animation seriously. This just happens to be one of their flagship animation titles that ended up being very strong. Now, that said, we are all for spoiling things on this show. We're just not going to spoil Ricky Ralph. Yeah, no. We, we, I may say that we'll do spoilers, and if so, suck it, but... L- l- like, we'll do spoilers in general. Like, Eris dies, <laughs> uh, Alice dies... The Titanic sunk. The Titanic sinks... They tested it on Mythbusters, and Leonardo DiCaprio's character could have survived uh, with some ingenuity and yep. their life raft. Wow, and l- l- let's face it, ingenuity and Leonardo DiCaprio? Yep. At- back then? Yeah, no. General Leo dies. <laughs> Tella dies. Nobody at FF8 is important. <laughs> nice. A lot of people die. Okay, so getting away from old spoilers, and truthfully, because because Carlos doesn't play modern games, as we um, discussed discussed last episode, I'll stick more to the modern spoilers. But even then, I won't do it for a long time after the game's out. So, oh, I'll spoil modern games. For instance, you like Gears of War three, do you? Well, someone dies in that game. That's right, General Leo. He did a shot. Uh, to the, as the audience can tell, uh, Carlos's Carlos's idea of modern is um dated, much like his fashion sense. My, my fashion sense is sweatpants and a t-shirt, and frayed edges on everything. Let me explain what he's wearing right now. He's wearing a nice lime green t-shirt with probably only one, two or three holes stained because he ate recently. And sweatpants. Frayed sweatpants. Frayed sweatpants. Let's not forget that. So, yeah, no, I fashion sense I will judge. The moral of the story is you can't trust the system. No, the moral of the story is <laughs> Wreck-It Ralph is a great movie. It is a great feature. Uh, but it's got strong characters, strong messages, uh, enjoyable by young and old, and deserves your money. So give it your money and stop giving Michael Bay money. Give this your money. It deserves it a lot more. Agreed. Moving beyond that, uh, we actually have a suggestion from one of our listeners about a possible podcast topic. Now, we're not going go to go into it quite as far as he no doubt would like it, because we haven't actually played a number of these, or can't really speak of, of them, but we are going to talk about the fighter... Fighter series and those games that are rarely referenced. Very obscure. Very fighters. obscure and just out there on most levels. Shout outs to Rowan for suggesting the topic. Speaking of fighters, before we get into it too much, I went to Canada Cup. And I got to watch him get his ass kicked live. On Persona 4 Arena, I made it to. Well, I was one match away from top 8 when I got eliminated finally, so I don't know if that makes me top 12. 
I think it makes me top 12. I could be wrong. I was blown up on stream. James Chen enjoyed my Metroid hat. Shout out to James Chen at Canada Cup. It was a great event. I did get blown up at Street Fighter and Marvel right away. I got to fight Justin Wong at Marvel first, and he very nearly triple perfected me. And I drew Justin Wong in Persona 4 Arena first, but uh, according to Justin, someone else entered him. So I didn't get blown up by him right away there. <laughs> I just got a buy, which was nice. But still, great event. It has inspired me to practice more fighters and attend more tournaments and go to more places with majors. And it was a good time. Shoutouts to everyone who made Canada Cup possible. Various members of the Edmonton scene who went and volunteered there as well. And a whole bunch of people, yeah. Good times. Fighters. Did you know that One Must Fall's combo system is what Mike Z apparently modeled his Skullgirls Infinite Protection system off of? Well, you told me today, so yes. Um, for that, though, not at all. In One Must Fall, you could use any move you want in a combo, but any move could only be in a combo once. Yeah, I, I remember One Must Fall. It's a PC-only game. It was one of the early, for the time, really good-looking um, robotic fighters where you could not quite level up your robots, but you could buy um, better parts for it, you want tournaments, everything else. And yeah, it, it was a big thing at the time. It was pre-Street Fighter days. One must fall. I think it was post-Street Fighter, but I know that it's kind of funny that its combo system is what Skullgirls was based off of. There are a lot of old obscure fighters that ended up doing things that later games would kind of, later more mainstream games would kind of put in. Like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighter for SNES was, I guess it still has a competitive scene to this day. And it kind of popularized the idea of most of your attacks are safe. And you can do them in rapid succession, and block strings were a big important part of that game. It also did two-button supers, which a lot of games used later. The Marvel series especially, where you just hit two buttons to do a team super. So what you're telling me is Justin Wong actually owes um, his amazing parry video to, to a few of those older games. Justin Wong got parried in that video by Daigo. It was Daigo who right. parried him. Okay. I'm not sure how amazing it is. It's more amazing that he did it under tournament pressure. The fact that there's a parry mechanic at all is stupid, but I'll get into that another day. Obscure <laughs> Fighters. What else is obscure? Pocket Fighter, otherwise known as Super Gem Fighter Mini Mix. Kind of obscure little Capcom fighter where your guys kind of change costumes all the time. There was one anime-based fighter a friend of mine had on PC... And I forget what the title was, but you could unlock a hente mode to it where the female anime characters would strip down, and one of them said the line, and I quote, See, my nose is pointier than my nipples. Uh, Japan. <laughs> That's all I can say to that. Oh, hente mode in the first place just screams that. As far as ones that we've played, I mean, friend of the show, Rowan posted a whole slew of different titles on our one of our recent Facebook posts. And to be honest, Rowan, I, I haven't heard of most of these guys. Um, e I have heard of them. Evil Zone was on PlayStation 1. That's all I know about it. Okay, well, great. Um, Melty Blood I've actually played. Melty Blood's a great game. Kind of air dashy hit lights. I don't know if it was into. a great game. More of a... It was visually impressive, it was stylistically impressive, and it gave you and me a lot of things to talk about as far as, could the main character kill Person X with, uh, yes. with his instant kill? Tsukihime, and thinking about the implications of Shiki Tono in the Marvel Universe. Specifically, we kept on going um, to, what, Darkseid? Dark side, but in Marvel it's a little more interesting because Marvel has a much more ingrained magic idea that is not sci-fi based like it is in DC, mm. where the editors go, fuck it, it's magic and it can't be mathematically explained. So how does Shiki Tono destroy an idea? How does Shiki Tono fight Dormammu? How does he kill the thing that can't be killed? Yeah, and How does he fight Shuma Gorath? 
Yeah, so de- definitely a anime slash video game fight or fighter game that has inspired much dialogue between the two of us. As a fighter, though, it's very Eridashi goodness. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of a little bit of Skullgirls, Arcana Heart. It's a lot like Marvel, in a way. A lot of these really good fighters that, like, Examu and whoever the hell makes, makes Melty Blood and Arxis made, were kind of Marvel, but with more systems added to it. Because the whole year, no, I don't. I don't like to give Marvel credit for diddly squat. Well, we got to give it credit for this because if it wasn't for the Marvel fighting games Capcom made, the whole idea of air combos and air dashes and chain combos into air combos into air dashes would probably not exist. And that even stemmed from Dark Stalkers, okay. which itself was based on Street Fighter Two with a twist. I'd re- okay, so I I can then give credit to Dark Stalkers for that then. You can get rid of the it, it, it puts a really bad taste in my mouth to give Marvel the credit. I gotta blow my nose yet again. <sighs> we'll keep that in. So what else is on Rowan's list here? Uh, Melty Blood ABK. What's ABK? No clue. Jump Ultimate Stars. Yeah, that's... I think that was a DS game with like Naruto and everything. Yeah, else, it had it? Naruto, it had Goku, it had a whole bunch of the Shonen Jump characters in yeah. it that could never come out here because of licensing. I thought I did. Pretty sure it never came out here. I'm okay. 96% so certain. you're telling me I played a pirate version? Got gotcha. you. You might have played a pirated version. Not that you ever pirate games. You play completely legal ones, so you obviously had a Japanese copy of. Them. No, I, I played it one time at one of our, at the um, video games live concert. Yeah, totally non pirated. I don't know if the person who let me play it had a legal copy. It That's j- not my problem. We do not condone piracy on this podcast. True. Uh, but no, I, I played and it seemed actually quite solid, but I got to play it for a whole two minutes. Hey, remember that Digimon Smash Brothers-esque platformer yes. fighter? <laughs> where the whole gimmick was you evolved your guy into his mega form. Yes. And still got your ass kicked by the other guy's rookie. Yep. Yes. Oh, now- man, Gilmon evolved into Gallatmon. And Agumon still beat the shit out of him. Oh, way to go, Galmon. Way to be awesome. I know all the Digimon names. Uh, that That's fine. It go, goes along with the the territory. But no, that that came out after Smash Brothers for GameCube, if I remember correctly. Cause that was a PS2 game. Yeah, I don't remember when it came out. And, oh, I just remember it. And Combined the first three def- seasons of Digimons. It definitely was interesting for all of five minutes, and then you realize just how bad a version of Smash Brothers it really was. Not that Smash Brothers is that great to begin with, but... You, you think, like, me, that the GameCube version was better than the, the Wii version. True, but uh, Stool is better than the Wii version, so what ooh, do you do? Ooh. Uh, let's see what else did you have on this list. Rakugi, which scribbles Showtime? I have no idea. No clue. It. Sorry, Rowan. Dream Mix TV World Fighters. Yeah, what it Konami was. Smash Brothers. Yeah, what it was. They Game Grumps featured this game recently. It was like a Konami Smash Brothers platformer fighter, and you could pick a bunch of Konami characters, and I think some other companies. Like you could pick Simon Belmont or Snake or whatever. Okay, so far you still yeah. Okay. It was a very poor fighter apparently. Gotcha. But very obscure. Now. I mean, my original intention was to go through this list and actually try and find the games, but in today's day and age, it would either cost a whole bunch of money to find a bunch of these, or require imports. So, sorry, Rowan, I, we're not going to play most of these games because it's just too much time, money, and bullshit but to do it outside of piracy. I might play it. Um, I might play them all. <sighs> before I get to Arkham Asylum, that is. I hate you so much. Next game on his list, Fatal Fake. I don't know what the fuck that is. That sounds like a boxing game. Uh, Psychic Force 2012. We I've re- heard of this. We remember this game, don't we? It was on PlayStation 1 or 2, and you could freely fly, and it was Psychic right. Powers. Right, 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 right. It wasn't great. <laughs> it really wasn't. I, I don't recall much about its quality. I just thought I the do. idea was novel. You and me played it a little bit, and it was... Hey, what was that one fighter where your super mode turned you into a shoot 'em up boss and the other guy just had to dodge your bullet hell spreads? What was that oh. fighter? It was on Xbox or Xbox 360, I think. You had to remind me of one of the worst purchases that I ever made. Would you remember what it was called? Uh, it's on my shelf. 
One second. Go over to Dave my. Dave is just walking over. Wartech. Wartech? Is that what it was called? Wartech. Yeah, yes. I, I remember this. Yeah, Wartech. This was one of the. This was the first disc game I bought for my Xbox 360. Right after buying the 360 Elite to play Pac Man. Pac Man. Thanks to you. Edition. Yes. That's a great game, but not a, a fighter. It's a great game, but. I bought WarTech for the two of us to play because it seemed like an awesome game. And then we found out just how bad it blew. It should have been good. The idea of a 2D shoot 'em up based fighter immediately brings ideas to my head about space control and, well, okay, space control, which is what any good fighter is really about, right? Yeah. But it seemed very... It was kind of like a bad version of Virtual On. It was more like Oh, trying, yes. It was trying too hard to be the novel idea of this shoot 'em up fighter and the super is, uh, super idea is bad because what happens if the other guy can dodge your bullet hell spreads how the hell are you supposed to deal with that yes and actually i was going to, b- to bring up zero on on my own because that was a game that i enjoyed did you call it zero on yes i did it's virtual on virtual on you oh. don't know any titles for anything <sighs> I'm bad at titles. I'll admit this. Virtual On was a very fun game that I enjoyed in in the arcades. The dual stick combat made little sense in the beginning, and then just became free flow. The P or the Xbox re-release on the arcade just sucked chunks. It just wasn't the same using the the controls, even the the PSN version. I was just, never big into Virtual On. I will admit, but I like the idea of a fighter where you're each in the cockpit of a mecha. It seems I, like a novel idea. I always wish that they would reintroduce the system, but as a Robotech or a Battletech simulator. Hmm. I think that would have been really awesome. Battletech fighting game, eh? Yes, mech, absolutely. Mech Warrior Championship Edition Turbo. <laughs> yes. Oh, and this is one that you'll know. Rival Schools 2. Yeah, Rival Schools... What's the name of that? It's called Project Justice. You had it for the Dreamcast. No, wait, no, there was Rival Schools. There was another Rival Schools. I don't know if it was called Rival Schools 2, but it had some extra stuff. And then there was Project Justice, which I currently still have. And my brother, Poe, and I occasionally still bust out and play it's fun, but it's broken as sin. The soccer guy, Roberto, is oh, so Oh, I, I remember broken. watching you two play it, and it just... Some of the combos you guys c- could pull off. The couple t- times I tried to play, I gave up because the, the D-pad on the, the Dreamcast controller just screwed me up so badly. I was a big fan. I never had Dreamcast sticks, unfortunately. I was a big fan of the idea that the sports theme students use their sports to fight people. That was good. Like volleyball chick Natsu, who did Akuma air fireball patterns with her volleyball spikes mm-hmm. from the air. That's pretty cool. I also like that a character with a baseball bat or a tennis racket could bat your projectile back at you with their implement. Yep. Other games that you and I have played, um, we've got Air Gates. Air Gates. There was a lot of well-designed things about Air Gates. I really wish there was an Air Gates 2 that kind of cleaned up the balance a bit. Because I did like the novel idea of it. It's just, you had Tifa and Masuda and every other character sucked. Pretty much. It was basically, Tifa was great at everything. Masuda was really good at one thing that now, broke Masuda, him. Masuda, that was the one that you kept on jumping on one leg with, the one with the rocket knee? No, that is uh, Han De Han, one of the worst characters in the game. <laughs> and yet you still managed to piss me off using him. I just wanted to learn Han De Han. He was he was a terrible character though. <laughs> he didn't have a proper he didn't have a good mix up game going. Like he he you could just high block him all day and stop everything he was gonna do to you. He had a great tracking projectile if you had the right stage for it, but Tifa's projectile tracked better <laughs> and then you could charge it up to have two of them. Like the, the the thing is that Tifa was just good at everything. She could fight you up close, she could fight you from yeah. afar. Masuda was the grappler, not Inaba, not the goofy looking grappler, but the grappler you have to unlock from the game's RPG mode on PlayStation. And that was actually one thing that made that that fighting game unique. Was it actually had a single player RPG that used a lot of the the assets? The assets. And it so... also looked really good for a PlayStation 1 yes, game. It, it did. was super good looking. Canonically, Masuda was the last champion of Airgate, so it kind of makes sense that he was so good. But the unlike Tifa, 
Masuda was good because he had two or three awesome things that were just broken. Tifa was good because she was just overall really good. Yeah. And then there are a lot of questionable mechanics, like how Cloud couldn't have a sword drawn for too long. Harkens back to the days when people made Wolverine games where he couldn't have his claws out for too long. Yeah. And then people the, just... The bullshit factor. And then people realized, wait a minute, he's Wolverine. Why aren't his claws out 24-7? And exactly. then that became the new norm for Wolverine, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I've now brought up a, a list of the different fighting games from over the years. What other ones that we've played... You got me into Guilty Gear very early. Yeah. And right right in the early P- PS1 days, and I basically owned every Guilty Gear that came out in North America, from Guilty Gear all the way up to the last version release. I think it was Is- Isuka. That's the four-player one. There was one after oh. that had ABBA and, and Order of Soul and Robocop. Yes, that one. Yeah. I own that Guilty one. Guilty Gear, and that was the Accent, last... Core, Plus, Ours, There we go. There we go. Omega, Super Turbo. There was recently a release on the Xbox Live Arcade and on PlayStation Network that is going to be patched to the latest arcade version, but very puzzlingly, not out in Canada. Hey all, Carlos here. Guilty Gear is now out in Canada, and apologies for sound quality issues, not sure why they're happening, we'll try to iron them up for the next episode. Thanks. Other games that I, we have, I've owned slash played, and I've actually got to get up because I forget to tell the one here. Battle Fantasia. I, thought, I also I also had Blaze Blue. I thought Battle Fantasia looked really good. Got a bum rap. I wish it was still a thing because I liked a lot of how that game played. I gotta I liked, admit, I liked a lot of how it looked too. I actually prefer Blaze Blue slash Guilty Gear to Battle Fan. I, I don't know if I want to lump Blaze Blue into Guilty Gear because Blaze Blue kind of plays like Guilty Gear's retarded cousin. Yeah. Like, the more I play it, I'm like, this kind of feels like Guilty Gear, but like Guilty Gear had a retarded cousin. That's my clever segue into this thing in the words English. <laughs> I think my issue with Blaze Blue, though, is that, like, its negative penalty mechanic was based on how far you were zoomed in, so you could glitch it up to make your opponent lose meter, and, and it's, it had weird two button throws that had a forever throw window, so throwing wasn't ever really an option. And there are a lot of stupid things about Blaze Blue that Guilty Gear kind of did right before, and Persona 4 Arena did right after. So I'm not sure what's up with this Blaze Blue middle child syndrome it has. Yeah. Arcana Heart, we both played. I love Arcana Heart to an extent. The girly I don't. Gr- I, the one thing I gotta say about Arcana Heart right off the bat. Is anybody who wants to say they feel bad playing this game, grow the fuck up. The thing about Arcana Heart is it's supposed to be girly girlness. These are girly girls with cute names who are all possibly lesbians. A lot of the art just kind of insinuates this. Who like pink and justice and love. Like, this is the whole mythos <laughs> of this game. It might, the character design and aesthetic might annoy you, but the game itself is novel in the way it treats flying and fighting at the same time, and picking a character and matching them up with an arcana so you get a unique kind of moveset going. There's a lot wrong with the games, but there's a lot they do right. That It's getting kind of worrisome that they've gone through so much iteration with two different versions of the first game, two of the second, two of the third now, Mm. and it's still kind of flawed, but it's still a lot of fun. A lot of people do have fun playing the game, and all I can say is if if the aesthetic bugs you, then don't play it, but don't bug us. It's it's stupid. It's the same group of people who call Skullgirl sexist. It's sexist. Look, you can see that chick's ass crack. Fuck the fuck off. Who gives a shit? Like, it's not like SNK's Mai, where she's paraded around you and she shows you her tits so you can buy their games. That's fucking sexist. (laughs) I'm moving on. Oh, Big Bang Beat. You looked so good, and then, from what I read, it was patched to Oblivion. Never played it. The developers patched it so much that it became not fun and broken and and slow and boring. Oh, it was a cool-looking right. Animu fighter that had some cool things, like one guy who, if he taunted you and hit you with his taunt four times, he would turn Super Saiyan, and it had an evil Kung Fu guy. And you could collect gems that fell off the guy, kind of like Pocket Fighter. It, it looked pretty cool, actually. Huh, okay. 
I think we both played pretty much every fighter that Capcom's put out, with the exception of their latest piece of shit. Street Fighter Cross Tekken, but that game's not obscure, so let's talk about the obscure ones. I thought Capcom Fighting Evolution got a bum rap. Yes. It looked like shit. However, it played solidly, and it was pretty well balanced, but it looked like shit. And it looked lazy. And I, I, I understand. You, you just you just hit it right on the head. It kind of looked like Mugen. It, well, it was a... During a point where Capcom still wanted to make a little bit of money off the, off the fighter series, but it didn't want to put any effort into doing anything. So it's just like, okay, we're just going to grab these sprites from different games, throw it together, and here you go. It but, honestly... But it played just fine. It looks like a bad Mugen crossover. Yes. But it plays like a bad Mugen crossover that had a bunch of thought put into it. Exactly. So it's really a shame. Oh, let's while we're on the topic of Capcom, <laughs> Tech <laughs> Romancer. Yeah. The game I always thought there was a secret final boss to and never found because the intro after the main character beats the bad guy showed him fighting the bad guy subordinate but in a bigger mech. And I managed to make that happen, but the bigger mech part never happened. Hmm. Did you ever look up any, any FAQs saying what I, it was or wasn't? I found nothing that confirms or denies anything. It's probably not there. Which means it's not there. The main character's mech is the only guy I used, and he had a semi-infinite. It had kind of 3D movement and objects and weapons you could grab on the field. Probably a very underrated game. Double Dragon the movie? I've got to say, I've actually played this rail, uh, this train wreck. There was a Double Dragon 5 fighting game. Does it have anything to do with that? No. There's also another one called Rage of the Dragons, which was made by some SNK subsidiary or something. No, no, we are talking Double Dragon, the movie, the arcade game, the fighter, based off of the really bad Double Dragon movie. And this was a versus fighter. Yes. I've never played this game. I have. I found, I went to this arcade, I saw it one time, I put in a quarter. And you hear people complaining about the Street Fighter movie fighter? Holy crap. Actually, the console version of the Street Fighter movie fighter had super turbo mechanics and actually played really well. However, the arcade version sucked. And this, its quality really did match the movies. Uh, yeah, so... You play a lot of SNK fighters, Dave? Some of the more obscure ones. What's obscure for an SNK fighter? That, that's the big thing. I mean, Last for, Blade. Played it. Last Blade 2? Maybe. It had. It, that's the game that uh, Hibiki came from, from Capcom yes. vs. K2. Okay. I always thought that was obscure because anytime I saw it in an arcade, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Sonic the Fighters. Which one of our arcades in this city of Edmonton actually had. Yes, played it. A movie theater, a cheapo movie theater. King of Fighters, depending on which which version could be considered. I don't know obscure, but but no, here's it's the still thing. pretty much a mainstream. As soon as you identify it as a King of Fighters game, it kind of yeah. loses its obscurity you factor. Know it. Melty Blood is definitely obscure, but we we've talked about that. It's underrated too. Anything from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fighter <laughs> games. I had the Genesis one. Geek. Notable for having a universal projectile reflection mechanic that every character could access. Also, Great. you couldn't pick the same character, Makes and sense. if one character picked someone, every other character that didn't make sense to fight that guy could not be picked. So if you picked one of the gigantic enemies, you could only pick a mecha or evil Green Ranger. Okay, sure. If you picked either Green Ranger, you couldn't pick the other one. You're going to areas I don't want to think about. Also, they were gay for each other. I believe that. Mugen. And Mugen uh, well, okay, any Mugen is obscure. But depending on the thing that people make out of it, it can be something grand. It doesn't have to be that it's not grand, but let, let's face it, Mugens are obscure. Whether mm. they're good, bad. And most of them are bad. Oh, God, are they ever. One Must Fall 2097, well, okay. which we talked about One earlier. One Must Fall, I... Yeah, back in the days, that was around 92, I was playing that on my 486DX33. What about that Kung Fu arcade game that had two joysticks? That's an obscure fighter. 
Also a shitty one. Yes. I don't remember the title, though. It was called Kung Fu. Oh, okay. No, that was the NES game. Sorry, never mind. Yeah, I can't think of the one that you were talking about. There's a uh, couple I, of Sailor I, Moon I, 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 I was just about to mention that. Anything that had to do with Sailor Moon in those days would be obscure. I remember a PlayStation 1 Sailor Moon fighter where every super took forever to animate except for Sailor Uranus's. So she was, like, the best character in the game, hands down, because her super animated right away. Well, yeah, but those games were more known for the, for the fun of the person powering up to do their super. You go over, you give them a backhand. Like it, how it should have happened in the show. Which he's never watched. I've never watched Sailor Moon in my life. Also, Sailor Moon could kill Doctor Doom, but he has to stay still for 17 seconds, and he won't do it. Also, it was a Doom bot. <laughs> SNK did release a gals fighter with their various female characters in a portable format. Apparently a lot of the portable Neo Geo Pocket Color fighters SNK released were really good, but there's one problem. They're on the Neo Geo Pocket <laughs> Color. And truly that gets to the end of what I can really well, well, think. I recognize a bunch of other games from that list like Waku Waku 7. Uh, go ahead. I rem- it, it was a game where I think there were bunny chicks and I don't recall there being Digimon Rumble Arena 2? There was a second piece of shit? Wow, they had money to spend. Yeah, clearly. Digimon is a popular franchise. Oh my god, Toshinden. Is that obscure enough? Because it was pretty popular for a while. It had an anime where the Ryu and Ken knockoffs were total Ryu and Ken knockoffs. Oh, that's... One of them was named Kayan. I wonder if that's where Kayan, who made I Want to Be the Guy, got his name. Could be. Could be. Could, his handle, I should say. I mean, ultimately, yeah. What? Ob- not even of the obscure type, but when it comes to fighting game mechanics, do you prefer the 2D, the 2.5D as it's called, or the um the full 3D? I just want to say 2.5D is the dumbest term I've ever heard. <laughs> I hate the term so much. I hate people who defend its existence. If it's 2D, it doesn't matter if it's polygonal. If it's 3D, it's 3D. Like, 2.5D is a bunch of bullshit. The only game that could claim to be 2.5D is Classic Doom, because it was kind of 3D, but kind of not. That kind of is 2.5D. <laughs> Anywho, I prefer 2D fighters. I don't care if they're polygonal or not. Well-made 2D ones. 3D ones, I'm not really, like, where you can move into the foreground and background. Not really my cup of tea, but there are some that I've liked, like Air Gates and uh, the b- b- Tech Romancer. But not really my thing. No. Sometimes fun to watch. I recently watched a really cool Tech and Tech Tournament 2 tourney. I did buy the game in the hopes of learning it, and it does do a lot of good things in its training mode. I'm not sure I'm going to learn it too well, though. <laughs> Came across one that I had, a couple I'd actually forgotten. Tom and Jerry War of the Whiskers? Not the This one. is a fighting game? Not the one I was going to go to, but... Who are the playable characters? Tom, Jerry, the dog, and the girl from the movie? Uh, I don't know. I guess there's a tag team mode. Team play. Who are the characters? Tom, Jerry, Butch, Spike, Tyke, Robot, Cat, Eagle, Lion, and Nibbles, Monster Jerry, and Duckling. Who the fuck is Robot Cat? <laughs> I remember Monster Jerry. What, what Wasn't Monster Jerry like when he took that formula? Or am I thinking of a... Sylvester and Tweety episode. I don't know. <laughs> Was there a Sylvester and Tweety fighting game too? Mm. I thought I saw a Putty Tat. 99 hits. <laughs> Final destination. Box only. Oh, God. No, I, I was going to bring out things like Star Wars Masters of Terrace Kasi. Ah, uh, wh- Star Wars Master- Masters of Terrace Kasi. Which had one of the funniest Luke Skywalker characters the the one that you started off with his hand missing. I don't recall this character. Yeah. All I recall is that I hit Han, Han Solo with that lightsaber so many times and he just didn't die. <laughs> he was immune to your, they your did, lightsaber. They did, in the in the extended universe, incorporate Terrace Kazi into some characters. Apparently Darth Maul was skilled in its use. And that's part of the reason why he was such a cool fighter. Sure. 
Speaking of there, Star there, Wars, maybe we'll get to this later. Let, let's but touch, there's let's, some let's big t- Star touch, Wars news. Yeah, let's touch on that after this. Uh, last one I'll bring up is Transformers Beast Wars Trans Metals. This is what <laughs> I this is what I played. It was a fighter, and yes, it did suck. There are a bunch of Gundam fighters as well. Do you remember Gundam Battle Assault on Super Nintendo? Not on Super or, Nintendo. No, no, on PlayStation. Sorry. Yes, I do. Where they took out the ma- the character in the Japanese version and put in Hiro Yui as our main character, and he got to beat up all the other Gundam characters because yes. all, uh, on this continent we thought Hiro Yui was Mr. Gundam for the longest time. True. Well, we did sort of get, uh, other than the ones who imported or brought brought in VHS rips, subtitled or fan subbed. We really did get Gundam Wing before any of the others. I know it's odd for me to suggest an anime you should watch, because anime is garbage, but G Gundam is so awesome and funny and cool, and would totally make a great fighting game. Sure. I'll get to it sometime after the, the Earth falls into the sun. Oh, revenge. It's your... I'll get to it. Hey, it's your loss. You're missing the one of the the only good Gundam show ever made. There is a Xena fighter. She's a warrior princess, and she's in the same universe as Hercules. Actually, click on that link. War Let's... Gods. That was one I played. Yeah, that was that was a Ar- midway game. That was in arcades. War Gods. I remember this. Yes. It was terrible. It was made by Atari, wasn't it? Mm, no, that was Midway Games. And that that should say a lot right there, because Midway did not have... Well, they published all the Mortal Kombat stuff until NetherRealm left them. But NetherRealm was never a subsidiary. It was more like Ed Boon trying to make do with the people he had to work with at Midway. Or am I wrong? Ed no. Boon, shout out to Ed Boon. If you're listening to this and I'm wrong, they did please, make, please set me straight. They did make Mortal Kombat. They did make NFL Blitz, NBA Jam... Uh, Killer Instinct. You know, I'm surprised you didn't mention NBA Blitz when we were talking about sports games in the last podcast, because you played a ton of NBA Blitz. NBA Blitz. NFL Blitz. (laughs) NFL Blitz and NBA Jam were definitely two games I played pretty heavily with friends, because they were awesome, but they put in that little bit extra that just made it a little bit different than actual football or basketball. While we're talking about basketball and fighting games... Shaq Fu. Oh. But I, I would argue Shaq Fu is not really obscure. It's pretty well known. I do think, despite it being a terrible, terrible, terrible game, it is not as terrible as some other really terrible games. Rumble Roses? Rumble Roses was an all-chick fighting game with heavy lesbian overtones. Yep. Still yeah. obscure and bad. Mm-hmm. I think that pretty much makes up makes up for the all the f- fire games we've played slash heard of. Anything else would just be reading from this list, and that's really not what we're going for. That's right. But we could do that. Battle Blaze, shitty Red Earth. Oh my God, Red Earth. Moving on. In Japan, it was called Warzard. It was a Capcom fighter where you leveled up your guy. You could choose between Lion Warrior, Ninja Magic Man, both of whom were in Capcom Fighting Jam. Very risque little ninja soldier girl. Of course. And some other character. That's also where that giant dinosaur came from. Hauser. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a fun game. So we've talked about our obscure fighters. I kind of want to get to a Mythbusters episode you got queued up for us to watch. So <laughs> what was our other topic again? <laughs> we were going to do difficulty, but... I That's th- a big topic. I think we'll need to put that one to the next time. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's kind of getting on in the evening, and I want to do more before I leave on my treacherous journey back home. So we've recorded our brand spanking new intro and out... Well, not intro, our disclaimer and outro. So we just have to sign off. I think we'll we'll sign off in a moment. Let's just bring up the certain um, elephant in the room that you were starting to mention before. Disney's acquisition of LucasArts. Okay, so here's the thing. Some people are upset over this, and to this I say, are Grow you up. kidding me? This is the best thing to happen to the franchise since... Episode 6 was released? I mean, let, I don't know what the last best let, thing to happen let, to the franchise let, was. Let's fa- face it here. 
anybody who's listening to the Star Wars fan, if you are enough of a fan that you've read the books, you've played all the games, you've played the MMO, everything else, let's face it, Lucas basically destroyed a whole bunch of our faith in the series with 1, 2, and 3. And it was, and it, and it was Lucas. I mean, he... For, for all the flack I gave him, shout-outs to George Lucas for realizing that someone else can do this better. Finally! It finally happened. <laughs> yes. Shout-outs to him for donating most of the money he got to this to charity, and for wanting to do phil- philanthrop- philanthropic... Phil- to do nice things in the future. <laughs> To nice. become a philanthropist. And he says he wants to do other kinds of films. Okay, he's grown out of it. He wants to be a creative consultant. Let someone else direct. Get jo- but, get Joss Whedon on this motherfucker. But that's just it. I'll say the same things to George Lucas as that, but I hate the man for his ego. I don't hate him, because I appreciate having an ego. But God, he has an ego. But the fact that he is a consultant, not a creative consultant. No, he's a creative consultant. He has absolutely no power to say shit. He no. is there to give ideas. He does have clout, though. The, the, Disney is not going to go fuck George Lucas ever. They know that this man is, uh, has made something that has made money. So Disney is not stupid. They will listen. I hope not much. They just won't listen to anything really out there. Well, like, if he says, you know, everyone should be Ewoks, they're going to go, fuck off, George. <laughs> but still, George won't do that, despite what South Park ins- uh, insists. Coming to a TV special near you, Star Wars The Christmas Special 2013. Oh, no, yes. I'm okay with Star Wars things that just mock Star Wars. I don't <laughs> see what the problem is in having a connect version of Darth Vader dancing. I, you know what? One of the, I'm gonna praise George Lucas's Star Wars run. He never minded his thing getting made fun of, ever. He wore a Han shot first uh, shirt to the set of a few movie sets after that became popular. He okayed Robot Chicken and Family Guy to do humorous Star Wars bits. That's true. With official music and official backing. Yeah. And he's voiced himself making fun of Star Wars so many times. Honestly, despite the fact that he had some bad ideas for how to make it good, he well, he at least the, his ego didn't get in the way of mocking his own work. So shout I, out! I, I guess that's definitely worthy of a a little bit of praise. But back to the Disney acquisition. This who else could take over the Star Wars franchise and has a chance of making it good? I can't think of another major studio that could pull it off. Not one. What about Uwe Ball? Die. <laughs> hey, don't knock him. Here's, he might, he here's, might listen to this and challenge you to an amateur boxing match. <laughs> here's a butter knife. Make for the fallen. Are you coming on to me? If by stabbing you in the chest, the butter knife is coming on to you, yes. This is kind of kinky, Dave, but let's get back to Star <laughs> Wars for a second. I think Disney can do great things with the fact they've already said, Episode 7, 2015, good job. Because they've taken it over now, and they're actually putting forward a goal. They also own the rights to the Indiana Jones series now. There's stuff that they can do with it, and Disney's not afraid of making games. Lucas has been in the past five years. I want another Rogue Squadron at the worst. And at the best, I want freaking um, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter or just X-Wing or TIE Fighter 2. Gimme now, I will give you money. That's all I got to say about that. I want a proper sequel to these games. All four listeners of our podcast know that I'm an aspiring screenwriter. And sometimes when I'm not working on an actual spec script, I work on something on the side that is purely for my own entertainment. Sometimes it is, it's technically fan fiction because it's based off some property I don't have the rights to. And sometimes I'll draw from it from ideas. Sometimes I'll change its characters, make it original. And one of the things that I was kind of dabbling in was how I would make a Star Wars movie set in the far future. And now my dreams are crushed because Star Wars Episode Seven has been announced. So with that in mind, 
I might as well just talk about what I kind of like to see. I want to see one of two things come out of Star Wars. One of two things. I'm holding up one finger, people. One of two things. Yep, the index finger. One of two things I'd like to see out of Episode 7. Maybe you can talk about what you'd like to see after. I want to see one of two things. Completely ignore the extended universe and do a new take on what happens after the Battle of Endor. And not retcon, just a different continuity. Star Wars has dabbled in this before. Something that's movieable. Something that, that makes sense. Because if you look at the Timothy Zahn series, he didn't know what Sith were at the time. And he thought Dark Jedi was a term. And now we know a little bit more of these things that are fleshed out from the prequels and Old He's Republic. He's fixed and that. all that, you know. I, 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 not in the recent graphic novel of the Heir to the Empire trilogy, which I lent you. No, in, in the recent hardcover release of the series, he's actually gone in there and changed Dark Knight to Sith uh, Dark, and everything else. Is that right? Yeah. Well, the thing is, though, shout out to Timothy that Zahn. Is, that, that is, uh, I love your 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 novel style, and it's something in my earlier days I emulated when I tried to learn how to write. But I'd like to see some either new canon for that or something far future that the extended universe hasn't touched. And it's something like either Old Man Luke or even pre-Darth Vader Anakin was dealing with some mission or some relic that gets unearthed in this far future and is the basis for this Episode 7 story. Okay. The thing about it being called Episode 7 is it's, this isn't Star Wars some random subtitle. This is Star Wars Episode 7. Mm-hmm. That means Skywalker. Continue. Well, okay. And, and I'm going to say this. This means Anakin Skywalker. Anakin Skywalker is central to every Star Wars episode. Okay, and I guess now I'll start, because now now we're on a topic I can really geek out about. Geek it out! You I mean video games aren't that topic? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, but I can go uber geek on, on Star Wars. You remember that time he lost his focusing crystal and his other crystals? Okay, not, not that far. Made an <laughs> extendable <laughs> lightsaber with... A- anyway... Yeah, Speaking of just the movies, I, I've owned most of the books except for the most recent three to five years. Um, I've read most of the comics, played most of the games, so I'm pretty familiar with the multiple what ifs. I'm also familiar of the millennia previous to Anakin and the hundreds of years forward from Anakin. Me too, from reading Wikipedia. Okay, yeah, and that gives you a pretty good indication. But I sincerely doubt Episode 7 will have really anything to do with Anakin other than Luke still coming to terms with how Anakin fell. That's always been a big thing in the Star Wars Skywalker solo family is the whole... How did they fall? Why did they fall? And when will they fall? And let's keep this from happening again. Oh, Han, that, that your poor does, son. And who that the doesn't evil. happen. Darth <laughs> Cadis? Even, even, I think the, the one comic series is set like three or four hundred years in the future. And you're still dealing with a Skywalker yeah. solo. Kate Skywalker. Falling. Kate, Kate yes. Kate Skywalker. Oh, let, let's not forget the solo side of the family, which is running the Empire in exile. Or the main enemy, Darth Krait, who is actually from the Clone Wars and got put to sleep forever. Yes. And woke up and became Darth Krait, and he was actually from Tatooine, so they had that link. Yes, as well as the whole, he was infected by the Vaughn. The the Uzan Vong, yeah. You Uzan so, Vong. From rumors, and I'm putting a giant rumor on this because I don't have the article at hand to back it up. But they're saying that they're planning on using a script of Lucas's that's based 20 years in the future. And right after this, they mentioned that he has talked to Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill. Now. Speculation. Goodbye, extended universe. Speculation here is, no, I don't think so. Disney is going to blow it the fuck out of the water. And if they do, so be it. With respect to Timothy Zahn, we're completely ignoring everything he's done. Well, and that won't happen for one very big reason. The authors of the novels have gone in so many directions, it's pretty much impossible for Disney to now make a script or an idea 
that doesn't have some link to one of those stories. DC does it. There are 18 billion, billion different continuities that have somewhat well, relations to each other. And, and again, I, I say link to it. Even Marvel's been more doing it to lately. borrowing the idea that was being used there. I'd almost go as far as saying that even though I would love to see Timothy Zahn's novels done as a continuation, if you need to, do your own continuity and let's make something awesome. I, they're saying th- a movie every three years. Not that they're finishing a trilogy. A movie every three years, and if the novels have proven anything, there is a infinite things they can pull off. The, 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 they can uh, jump into the past, issues. they can jump into the future. It is literally an open book. So, Disney, go to it. Bring in a director like Joss Whedon. If they make a new continuity, I still hope Admiral Thrawn is in it. But that's going to be so confusing because now he's in a different continuity where he's the main bad guy again. Yeah. <laughs> you know how odd that would be? And there's actually nothing stopping them from doing a movie 20 years later but referencing everything that happens in the books. It's 20 years. So Han and Leia will have kids. They'll be in their teens almost. There's nothing stopping it. Going 20 years means they can use the re- the, the actors from now. Finish up. Because as you said, Episode 7 is the continuation. He always intended it to be a nine-movie series. So, you have the opening he's, he's gone back and done, you had the present, and now you have the future. Use the original actors for the next three, and move on. Episode 10 should be hundreds of years in the future, or abandon the whole episode idea completely. You've had episodes one through nine, you're done, move on. That gives you the ability to do the past or the future. But the universe is ripe for new continuities to be used. And new continuity doesn't necessarily mean you have to, you can't grab all those ideas from the books. I think all, I think we can all say that as long as it's awesome, we're happy. Disney. Star Trek dabbled in new continuity. Disney has proven that it can take over a company and do mature, awesome films in the Marvel side. Yep. So, let's give Disney a chance. Obviously, they've spent $4 billion for frickin' LucasArts. At, at, They're not just going to throw out shit. That's still a bargain they got it for $4 billion. I, I don't think so. I really don't. It's at $4 billion with what Lucas has done with it in the past 10 years, other than re-releases. And extended universe content. Games have been a very big deal with this extended universe. And he's universe. done good and he's done bad. Yes. But this is still a big deal. Like, there's it, the Old Republic. There's Star Wars 13. Old Republic failed. There's, there's, no, no, the Old Republic. Canon. Oh, they, yeah, that, okay. that whole era. There's there's uh, the Force Unleashed. There's which was good and then bad. There there there's there's tons of shit, right? Uh, as long as it's good, just make it good. Yeah. Star Trek did new continuity, but it doesn't even have to be new continuity. Just make it awesome. Get a good director, a good writer on, perhaps an aspiring screenwriter from Edmonton. <laughs> I'll write your new Star Wars script. <laughs> Incestuous rape everywhere. <laughs> well. You're your ja- the, the Japanese <laughs> No, the Japanese take on it. Oh, Leia, you are my sister, but I still find you hot. What accent am I doing? <laughs> Rapist. This is a rapist accent. Hey, baby. But I think we've um, sort of done we've that We've worn to out our welcome on an incestuous <laughs> rape. Okay. So, yeah, I think that Disney, it's, it's a good thing that they've taken it over. You just said we've done it, <laughs> and now you're talking about it again. Um, so this has been Dave. Carlos here. And this has been Two Fat Guys Talk Games and Movies and pretty much everything. Yeah. Awesome. Go see Wreck-It Ralph. Now. Yes. Get up. Go. I don't care if it's 2 o'clock in the morning where you are. Go. Go see Wreck-It Ralph Ralph. before it goes out of style. Theaters. (laughs) (laughs) Good times. All right.
So if you've liked what you heard, you want to leave us some feedback, you want to give us some criticism, whatever, our podcast site is tfgtg.blogspot.com, where you can also find the feed link and our YouTube channel. You can also find us on Twitter at tfgtg. Yeah. <laughs> there's, right. no, there's no way to continue that. So no uh, continue please, that sentence. <laughs> please leave us some feedback. We accept good and bad. We will usually respond, seeing as we have such, such a small group. Bonus. We do have thousands of millions of followers, so we might not respond to you right away. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs>